Hey, this is Jessica from Timefire VR. In this tutorial, I will show you how you can take a high poly mesh from Blender and bake a color ID mask inside of Substance Painter. The end result is an intricate high level texture that's easily customizable. Here we have a standard 2x2 meter plane that's unwrapped to the full 0 to 1 UV space. This is a high poly mesh we will be using to bake our normals from. I've created various scribbles and placed them on top of our plane. In order to generate an ID map, we will need to assign each element with a colored material. You can use any colors you like, but typically it's much easier to assign hues that are fairly distinct from each other, just to have an easier time color selecting. In this example, a color block different details I may want to assign different materials to in Substance Painter. I generally advise you block out more colors than you may potentially need. It's much easier just to not use a color in your color ID mask than it is to generate a new one by going back into Blender and rebaking your texture map. So in the end, I assigned five different colored materials to my high poly mesh. This will result in five different colors I can use for my color ID mask. We'll go ahead and export both my high poly and my low poly mesh. Here I imported my plane into Substance Painter and I prep it for baking by identifying my high poly mesh. You can go ahead and adjust whatever bake parameters you may need. I left it at default except I set my AA to 2. In your ID settings, you just want to make sure your color source is set to material color if you are following this example. There's other options such as vertex color, mesh ID, submesh ID. Now we just hit bake and we wait. So about a minute later, we have our bake. If we hit B and view our additional maps, you can see our color ID map baked based off of our colored materials we assigned in Blender into the high poly. Let's look through the other texture maps just to make sure everything baked as intended. As you can see, our maps baked pretty well with no artifacting or anything crazy really happening. In our layers, I assigned a marble smart material to act as our base texture. Let's drag in the bronze armor and add a mask with color selection. Since we baked the map, Substance automatically assigned our ID map for us, but you can select a custom one if needed. If we hit pick color, we can start selecting hues from our baked map. Here I selected green and we can see we have our bronze armor masked to only show in these areas. We can add additional colors as well. In this case, the red portion of our ID mask. I went ahead and assigned different materials with the same color ID mask. This time I selected the purple sections only. Here, I mask out another color as an example, but it necessarily wasn't the design I was aiming for. Utilizing masks is a quick way to make iterations without taking the time to hand paint details on or off. You can add, remove, and modify materials in a very non-destructive manner. It's also a very quick way to make different iterations simply by assigning different materials to your color ID mask. Color ID masks in particular are fairly versatile. You can adjust the tolerance and output value of your mask. If you had similar hues of purple, you could fine tune how much or how little of that particular color would take place in your mask. Another benefit of using Substance Painter is that you can add a paint layer to your mask to custom tune what you want masked in or out. In this case, I didn't like the inner ring being masked into the texture, so I hand painted that out. You can use filters or other procedurally generated masks on top of your color ID mask. There are multiple ways to achieve this result. This is only one workflow. 
You can make color ID maps inside of a photo editing software or inside of Blender itself, or even use color ID maps inside of Substance Designer instead. So this is the end result. I utilized this tileable texture after making a few quick texture iterations in order to apply the texture onto various surfaces. As you can see, I used it on a wall, on a table, and on a coaster. If you use this technique, have any suggestions, or would like to see more, please let us know in the comments and on social media. Thanks for watching, and please remember to subscribe to get more videos like this one from the Timefire VR team.